I wanted to do a video on Google Earth Pro. Uh, Google Earth Pro is a fantastic tool for looking for sea fishing marks on the UK's coastline. Just by putting Google Earth Pro into the Google search engine, it comes up. Uh, you can download it to your uh, PC or Mac. Uh, agree and download, all that kind of thing. Uh, but I want to get on to how you can best use it to uh, find where the fish are, maybe fish some new marks or find local marks yourself that you, you might not have known about. Um, so, I'm launching it now, as you can see, the world comes into view. This is a fantastic tool, this. Um, I'm just using the left hand mouse key to rotate the earth there. Uh, as you can see, you've got the UK there. Now, the different ways of getting to where you want to go, um, you can type into the search bar here, top left, uh, the area you might be looking at. Um, I've always liked a, a place called Abadaron in North Wales. So type it in and press return. And what will happen is, I'm not touching anything else there, the Google Earth will find Abadaran. That's the one I want. Lovely. Now we'll look in a little bit more detail about how you can use this to catch fish in a moment. But if you come across to the left hand side here, um, you've got this uh, couple of options here. Don't generally use places, drop down menu. But the settings to get right will be under layers. So just briefly, you want to click in the box that says the new Google Earth uh, and also terrain. And I'll come on to why that's important in a minute. You don't really need 3D buildings in there either. Uh, there is an option for photos. So if you're going to somewhere new, um, and particularly if it's a touristy area, you'll find lots of people are taking photos. There's Abadaran, and you can see these little squares come up there that's where someone's taking a photo so you can just click say on this one randomly press left mouse click it's got a few pictures there um, it's quite good for a little overview of, of where you might want to fish um, so by using the left mouse button you can move and navigate round to where you want to go um, I'm just going to get rid of this sidebar here hide sidebar up on the top top left hand corner and there you go, you've got it all on screen. Um, if you hover this hand over a particular area you might want to look at, let's look at here, uh, left click, double click down on here, and that's all you do, and it will zoom right in on uh, whatever the hand is over. So you've got a little muscle bed here, something like that. Um, and it's actually a 360, Thing here I'm just going to double click on that what's that going to do that's going to take us around to here open this up and by scrolling around you see in the top right hand corner uh, there's a 360 panorama visual of this um, little bay in North Wales called Aberdaran so you can have a look that's yeah, quite good so you get an idea of what sort of uh, the access is to fishing at that mark. So just quickly, ax, uh, just quickly exit that now. And then your navigation tools, when you hover the mouse over on the top right hand corner, you've got this slider where you can go up to go in and down to go up. Uh, you also have this person here which you may have seen on Street View. So if you were looking let's say for an entrance to a car park to park for the sea fishing mark, you just stick that on the road view, you drop it down, da -da -da, and then you would say, oh, right, I've got you, so I need to come in there for the car parking, something like that. Marks. Um, up here, there's a picture of a ruler. If you click on that, uh, you can do a path, which will measure a distance. So if you wanted to walk along the coastal path, um, you can, and it will tell you how uh, long the walk is so you might have found I don't know a path up here say somehow um, and then that will put that into either feet with this drop down menu here or meters um, 
So you're looking at, say, to get to this rock mark up here very roughly. You can be a lot more accurate, of course, by zooming in. But let's say you wanted to fish down on this rock here. You're looking at, you know, 1400 meters, so almost a mile walk just to get to the, the fishing mark itself. Um, so you can measure distance that way. And of course, uh, let's say you found an interesting feature along this beach. Let's have a little look. Uh, yeah, so let's say I wanted to hit this, this clean ground here where I'm circling with the hand uh, from the beach. Um, I would measure using this here in meters. You can, you can drag that around to move it out if you want. Um, so I'm casting from here and I want to hit this clean ground here. Um, I know that that would need a 78.34 meter cast. Um, sort of halfway up from halfway up the beach. Um, this is probably better used when you're, you're casting across reefs and things like that. So you would know, say, if the tide is up here, the tide line is up on here, uh, by casting from here, and you wanted to clear, clear this rough ground, say at high tide, you'd know you'd need a cast of over 117 metres. You could, if you were... Um, being really obsessed, you could even mark that on your uh, fishing line somehow with a rubber band or um, pen or something like that. You can actually mark uh, how far that cast would be. Um, so that's, I mean, that's two, two good things you can use that tool for there. Um, the other thing to look at, which is uh, quite relevant as well, is you can change the uh, time of day and year by clicking up here on that little arrow rewind button up the top. Um, and once you've found where you want to fish, you'll find better shading to look at the underwater features and also different states of the tide. So, you know, like a low tide is going to be more useful for you to find the marks um, as well. So have a little play around. I think it goes back, this, this version is going back to 2006. I've got a latest version there at 2009. So look for your um, the, the best visuals by using that as well. You can also look at daytime, times of night, where the, where the light is at certain times of the year. Um, you can be really obsessed, of course, and end up not going fishing at all. So um, <laughs> just use it, use it for that reason. Okay. Um, yeah, so just click back on here, which gives us this bar down on the left hand side and this is why we use terrain I'm going to grab here I just want to show you um, you've got these rocks here that are obviously quite steep if you didn't have terrain clicked um, it looks a little bit odd um, but using the navigation here if you use this eye level dropper here uh, let's get this right right so Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm clicking the middle of the mouse and I can change the angle of view by clicking my middle mouse button and dragging it directly down and you get an idea of the size of the mountains there. This is actually the Uchmanid uh, coastline, a uh, fantastic place up in North Wales but you can see that the rock marks yourselves when I double click in again with the mouse, uh, are going to have that sort of depth to them. It's not entirely accurate, but it does give you a good start um, and an idea of, of what your climb down will be, for example. So zooming in here, um, this is a little port here. You can see there's an access down to this place. So if you haven't fished here before, what I would probably pick up on here, this is obviously rocks, looks like kelp and weed there. I'll double check, see if there's any um, uh, evidence from the photos. Looks like there is there, look, yeah, plenty of weed on those rocks. And you can see where the clean ground runs there. And then you can follow along coastline, maybe look for somewhere down here that you, you haven't seen before. Uh, I use this hand tool up on the right hand corner there. Ooh, come back down again. So yeah, slowly moving along, you can see some of those rock marks. That really just shows the potential there of some of these amazing places we've got on our coastline using Google Earth Pro.
Yeah, so use it to scan round some coastline. I'll be using um, Google Earth Pro to take a look at some of the north coast marks along this Flynn Peninsula. Uh, and you can see how interesting it is uh, and how you can see how you will find new marks. There are other things you can do with it. And of course, you do need to take precautions if you're going particularly uh, to rock marks like this off the beaten track. Uh, you might think you'd be able to get down and all of a sudden there'll be a sheer cliff down here somewhere. Um, so don't just rely on these photos um, or the Google Earth Pro. But um, as a start, I, I find it's an excellent, uh, an excellent way to look for new sea fishing venues. I'm going to go from Aberdaran in North Wales to the southwest now just to show you something else uh, you can do. Um, I'm going to have a look at Falmouth and I've gone to 2017 here where they've got some imagery of it at low tide and I was looking at a mark I wanted to try just there um, and this really shows the relevance of um, these little tributaries here holding places for things like flounder um, as well and you can see the little channels these are the places you might want to try um, again for for flatfish and things like that and bass will run up here as well and don't forget always use the um, distance tool as well which says, says what your path or line is um, so you know how far to cast to get into those gullies um, Okay, so that's a basic overview of um, Google Earth. Let us know what you think or if you've actually used this. Um, I'm just learning about it really, so uh, any hints or tips you can give me, uh, particularly to make the Sea Fishing Mark videos better, I'd really appreciate it. Um, so tight lines, thanks for watching.